What's up guys, it's Dink here. This is episode 2 of Dink Facts. I'm going to do uh, the one that everybody has asked for, which is how to get out of pressure and dealing with pressure situations. Uh, I'll show you a little bit with Quan, uh, what you need to know, and a little bit of the mentality behind it. So uh, I guess there's a few different ways that you want to punish or get out of pressure. Number one is recognize, this is the most obvious one, just recognizing what's uh, what's negative and how to punish it. So I chose Cassie Cage because she's pretty safe and she demonstrates a lot of the stuff that I want to do. So I'll start with... Uh, I went right there. It's negative 11, so I can use my 8 frame standing 2 to punish it and get her away. And then, of course, uh, the nice thing about that as well is that you know, pushes her away. You can move in and try and get a more advantageous position. So knowing what's negative, what you can punish. It doesn't always have to be a true punish either. If you put some negative, you can go for a mix-up like that. So if you know a move is like minus six or like minus five or minus four, something that's not truly punishable, but you can reverse the momentum you can go for a mix-up instead of a true punish. Um, the next thing that you should know is um, armoring out. So I'm going to set her to so this string right here is plus one on block and then down one is six frames so if I block all of it, she'll beat me to the punch every single time. Assuming I timed it right. Seems that I did. Try to down three there. Oh, I must not have timed it right. Hold on. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, because that's plus one and Quan has no moves that are fast enough, you have two options. You can back dash that hit, which of course doesn't really work in the corner. Or you can armor through it, because there is a gap there. There's a six frame gap between this move and this move. So you can, and your armor starts up instantly. So that's an option as well. Yeah. At least you get the idea there. The other option is to wait until the poke gets blocked and then count. So you know the poke's coming, you know she gets the poke for free. So you can Wait, block the whole thing. Right. Counter poke. Go into pressure. Go into mix ups. Whatever you want. Go right into a mix up. You don't even need to poke. I don't know why she just randomly did that move, but that's cool. <laughs> um, mid screen is a little bit easier to deal with her. Uh, situations like this anyways. So that's another thing is you have to know about gaps and strings because that'll help you get out of pressure. So although Quan can't really do anything after he backdashes this, it negates the plus frames that she gets off that and then that. Nice thing about knowing about gaps and strings is you can also armor it too. Nice 
time up there, but you get the idea by now. A lot of the times the best option is just to wait. You can condition them, like say, oh, they're doing that every single time. And you see that. And it gets down to a clutch moment where they're about to chip you out. And that's when you save your armor for that clutch moment. So it's just playing around with characters, recognizing their strings. Um, if your character has armor, armoring at the right times. If it doesn't, then waiting until you have a spot where the character is negative to counter poke. Sometimes in the corner, if I'm stuck in the corner, um, I'll just do a reversal throw like that, because that'll get me out of the corner. Put them in the corner, and you get a small punish out of it, and then frame advantage to do what you want. Um, specifically for Quan Chi, um, to get out of pressure, his best poke is probably his down three. Or his uppercut. So down three is negative on block. Or oh, minus one on block, sorry. And it's uh, fit plus 50 on hit. So if you hit him with a down three, you get to go right into this. Or you can go into the... Uh, Back three, you can just down three throw. So special cancel as well. They can back dash that option, but it's kind of hard to react to if you're not used to it. Um, yeah, and then the uppercut, just because it gets you off them, or gets them off you, creates that space. Although if you whiff the uppercut, you stand there with his fist in the air forever. Lots of recovery frames on it. It's not very good. So make sure you use it at the right times. And then the other one is standing two, which is eight frame startup. Although the first hit is a high, so it'll whiff if they duck. You can also do that right there. So you can plus frames. Do whatever. So after pressure. Um, one that I use sometimes is um, 141. Nine frame startup, so it's a little bit slower. This is more of a punishing tool. I'll go 1 4 trance, like that. But if you want them away from you and want to keep it fairly safe, 141. Got a bit of pushback. Want it backwards to bait the counter poke. Back one trance. Um, that's pretty much it for his universal ones. I mean, for Warlock, you have the scoop. For Summoner, if you have a bat out, you can just release block really quickly and let the bat go and block again. Um, Sorcerer, not really anything specific in that one that I'm aware of. Um, and of course, the worst option in the world, EX Skydrop. If you need something really bad, it's your only option. Just YOLO it. But anyways, I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, go in the lab and find out uh, different strings that you can poke after. Now that you know how to do it. Now that you know how to bait it. And now that you know what moves to use. At least with Quan Chi. Uh, with your character, hopefully you can uh, experiment with some of the armor and whatnot as well. Uh, that's all for me. And we will see you next week on Dink Tips.